Attention, da! Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome to a Ghost of Sentai Dai Ranger review. Today, we're taking a look at the Super Sentai Artisan Deluxe Dai Reno. What does that mean? That means this is kind of a boring shipping box. Here's the real deal this is the Deluxe Super Sentai Artisan Dai Reno. Now, there is a lot of history going on here. Um, first of all, uh, to answer the question that I think people always bring up when talking about this, step one. Is this the same as the Legacy Thunder Megazord just released in a Dairino packaging? No, not even close. Uh, the Legacy Thunder Megazord was released by Bandai of America in, I believe, 2016 or 2017. I can't remember. I didn't buy it. Um, but it was designed to be a brand new mold, similar to the previous Legacy Megazords that Bandai had released. And those were kind of smaller, slimmer builds, Zord Builder compatible. Um, very much more accurate to the show model. I will give that credit to the Legacy Thunder Megazord. Um, but overall, they used a lot of die cast. And after having the Legacy Ultra Zord, I kind of felt like I didn't want to buy any more Legacy Zords strictly because I felt the die cast to plastic ratio was all right, but it was in the wrong places. Um, and I, I do prefer stability over um, style. So here we are. Now, if it's not a mold, what is it then? Well, this is a recreation of Deluxe Dairen O from 1993. Um, the idea of recreation is that they don't have the original mold for the original Dairen O that was released when the series was on. So what they've done is they've recreated the, the molds to the best of their ability to be the most accurate to the original style, but in doing so opened up the possibility of a lot more options with sculpting and painting. Um, basically, the idea is that this is the original Dairino, updated and upgraded, without losing the structural integrity of the original and not losing the style of the original, but making it better than it ever was. Um, and the first thing you can notice is the box looks spot on. Um, most times, just like in the North American release of the Thunder Megazord, uh, with Dairino, a lot of it would be released as the set of Chi uh, Beasts and the... Um, Ryusei-O, but there were, you know, sets available that were the entire Dairen-O, um, which is the box that's been recreated here. Uh, the only real changes that you're going to notice between this box and the original box is that this one has all the extra painted detail. This one also features the Super Sentai Artisan logo, and it has the approved by Toei Company. From the pictures I saw this box online, I couldn't see the approved by Toei Company logo, um, but that may have been on there. But when you look, so if you're looking on a Japanese auction site, something like that for this, you want to make sure it says Super Sentai Artisan. Uh, so try to zoom around the photo because this is pretty much going to be your biggest indicator between this box and the original box. Um, otherwise, it's relatively identical on all accounts. Um, everything's down to like the way the, the material it's made out of is different and stuff doesn't come in styrofoam trays anymore. But um, it's very much recreated to be the same box. Uh, you know, this side has pictures of the toys and how they combine. The back has the combination directions on it, which I think is super fun, including a feature I didn't know about. I've had the Thunder Megazord, the original Thunder Megazord for most of my life. Never knew you could put the little minifigure inside the chest like that. That was something I knew, learned today. Um, but yeah, you can see the directions on the back here. Um, and of course, it doesn't actually show any of the bonus accessories that were included that weren't with the original, which I think is really awesome uh, for recreating that look. Um, on the side, you have pictures of the actual in-show models and costumes. I think it's super awesome. Um, another big another big clue um, between the two boxes to look out for as well is the hands, because the hands have been re-sculpted. Um, so you have that to go off of. But enough about the box and the history of this. I think this is really cool. Um, oh, there is one more thing. This thing was super limited. And what I mean by super limited is that it was a premium Bandai exclusive. I think that's kind of natural with how large and unique, unique this item is. Um, but this was kind of more special than the actual um, normal premium Bandai items. Normally premium Bandai, they put up an item, you pre-order it, you pay for it then, and it's you know ordered, and then they ship it to you because they make however many they make. Um, sometimes they have customer service stock. Sometimes they do a second run of things. Um, this was one of those cases where it really felt like it was made to order. And it, it was very much so because in order for this to actually get made, 
uh, 2,000 people had to sign a product request form. And that was basically a form on the Premium Bandai website that said, I will buy this if you make it. And by going through that process, Bandai was able to gauge to make sure that this thing would sell well enough to go through the money and the cost to recreate the original molds, uh, which is a very expensive process, especially since Dairino is one of the more complicated. It's probably why they started off the Super Sentai Artisan reprint line with Dairino. It's a very popular design. It's one of my all-time favorite uh, mecha, and I'm so happy to have this. Um, now, there were two uh, little side notes with that. Um, this originally went up for offer, I think, in May of 2017, uh, which was a really long time ago, because it is now March of 2018 when this finally came out. Um, the orders close were supposed to close in June, I think, but it got pushed to July, um, and it got pushed off a couple more weeks. So I actually paid for this uh, roughly July of 2017, and now I finally have it here in March of 2018. Um, I had to go through a middleman service. Okinawa I'm Toy Seller um, is definitely recommended. Um, he helped me get this. It was one of those things where I saw it, and I was like, oh, I want to get on this. Um, there was the price there. It was very expensive, and I got to say that this is mostly, this is kind of out of price range of most people. Uh, it was 20,000 yen, I believe, or 22,000 yen originally, um, plus middleman fees and shipping ended up bringing my total over $350. Um, for me, that was totally worth it because of how much I love this design, how much I love old Sentai Mecha, and just what is included. Um, I definitely, definitely felt like the price was worth it, um, especially spread over months as well, that helped. Um, but I know for most for, for most people it won't be. Um, and that's very much what I wanted to get up front. Um, now, I did need 2,000 orders to... Or 2,000 requests to get made, which it made in less than 24 hours, which was awesome. And in less than two days, uh, the 3,000 orders were made, which was a stretch goal that allowed us to get a special bonus item included in the box. And we'll be taking a look at that a little later. The Super Sentai Artisan reprint line is continuing, uh, at least with one more release and that would be with Wan Tiger. I'm not planning to pick up Wan Tiger, and that's mostly because I don't like Wan Tiger as much as I do love Dairino. Um, and for the cost and everything, and the timing of when it's coming out and when I need to pay for everything, it's just not going to work for me. Um, but he is 14,400 yen. Um, or just, or the requests close on March 30th, and I think it was smart that this shipped out March 12th, so you could kind of get it in hand and decide, do I, do I want Wan Tiger in case you hadn't already ordered him? Um, he also has made production goals, so he will be produced. Um, last thing about packaging, though, I will say I love the instruction sheet included as it is in green and white, uh, much like the classic uh, Dairino instruction sheet, which I think is just super awesome. So we spent a lot of time going over what this is, how it came to be, uh, what's in the future, uh, all the complicated process involved with getting it. Now that I have it, how about I review it? Um, so, without further ado, let's take a look at Dairino, beginning with Ryusei-O. Here is Ryusei-O slash uh, Star Dragon. Now, like I said, there was a special bonus gift uh, for making the 3,000 requests, uh, which was above, that was the stretch goal, basically. And that would be these. These are the Heavenly Treasure Lili Balls, is the official thing. Um, they're the... Uh, they're the actual jewels that are used to summon the uh, Die Rangers Star Beasts. And this is just so cool because it actually looks like the ones in the show. Because from this angle, you don't have any... You can just see the color, kind of like the ones they'd use as props. When they'd have the close-ups, it would shine with the symbol. And the symbol here is reflected on both sides. It's really nice. Uh, they're a nice, sturdy material. They don't feel like they're... They're not glass or anything, but they are... They are pretty solid, um, and you can't even see the seam line on them, which I think is really impressive. Like you can see where the, the line in the design is, but you can't see the seam line, but I love how it catches light. This is just, this is a cool bonus, because it wasn't factored into the original cost of Dairino. If they hadn't made the 3,000 requests, it wouldn't have made these, and I do say these because there are, are all five of these, which we'll take a look at individually with each component of the mecha, but oh, this is just gorgeous. Um, anyways, enough gushing about uh, these 
the the lilac balls, but they're so nice. Uh, Wan Tiger is gonna get one of these as well, which I think is super cool and probably one of the most tempting things about Wan Tiger for me, but really happy with that. So we'll take this aside and we'll take a look at Ryu Seo. Um, now, let's take a look firstly at a couple accessories. Uh, first of all, one of the big deals with this set is it does include the original minifigures that were included with the original Dyrono way back when. These things are super tiny, so the camera's going to have a hard time picking it up. So you can focus on my hand. Almost. There we go. So this is what the original ones look like. They're very stocky. They're very built in one solid way. This is the new molding version. Now, what they did was they basically wanted to make them more proportional to the mecha and be properly posed. So all five die rangers come with the original. So you can have the original look, or you can have the new updated look. And we're just going to add that right here to the top of Ryusei-O. Um, this one, of course, won't fit in Ryusei-O's chest, uh, but the original one will. So, uh, other things, the staff actually has been remolded. Now, what I mean by that is that you're going to see the first thing about this, this whole set here, and that would be the etched-in sculpted detail. This is actually sculpted in and painted. No stickers whatsoever in the set. This end's closed off. This end is the hole to add the staff. It does still split. Uh, this time it's really necessary. But when you compare it to the original, uh, this is off a Red Dragon Thunder Sword. You see they actually enlarged the tips on the end. Um, and overall, they kind of made it a little bit sturdier, I think. Um, it just kind of feels feels nicer. Um, this one's kind of thin. This one's thick. Again, this could be Bandai of America stuff, but there's the staff. Uh, and then we'll talk about this piece uh, in a bit. Let's just pull this aside. So, let's take a look at actual uh, Ryusei-O, uh, the long, long dragon. Um, again, most of what, I think, a lot of the cost that went into this set was paint, because this is just gorgeous. Uh, there's a lot of details that were lacking from original Dyrono, mostly because it was entirely stickers for the most part, but stuff like the inside of the mouth being painted, the individual teeth, um, you know, the eye detail, just the gold being used instead of yellow, uh, which is really nice overall. And like I said, instead of any stickers, they've gone over those areas and sculpted them in. This is all sculpted and painted. It's a double... It's a double job here, which I think is great. And that the advantage that they had being that they didn't, if they had the original molds, I think this would have been maybe a little cheaper, um, but it would have just been a straight reprint. And it, I don't think it would have been as worth it. But when you add in all the sculpted detail, this just gave them a chance to improve on everything since they didn't have the original molds. They had to recast them. Now you have, you know, sculpted details like that. That would have not even been there um, or been a sticker like here's the sticker areas. This is kind of like what you would get to put stickers on to get that kind of detail, but now you get it sculpted and painted. And that's what I think I was really wanted to appreciate, especially the paint in between the different sections of the legs. I think that's amazing. And the tailpiece here, really well painted as, as well. Um, I think it's just, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. And I think this is the, you know, Super Sentai Artisan line has that artisan name to it, but I think that this is really a work of art. Um, now, of course, this is not the only form of Ryusei-O. You can actually convert him into his warrior mode, his, you know, the Ryusei-O mode. Um, so we'll take the head off here. More on that in a bit. Um, and the tail pop off here. And now we'll come around and rotate the legs down, which, of course, this is all new plastic. There's nothing loose right now. Everything's screwed in still, so it's still got screws. It's not pins or anything. It's the same general construction of the original. It's all nice and new and tight. And this feels like a much sturdier plastic than the original, which is good. Um, really great, really great stuff here. Still got all that solidness. That's that's what I love. That's what I love is the solidness. And this part here flips around and it pegs in nicely there. So there's Ryusei-O, um, at least his body. Kind of need to move the camera. So we get to this point here, uh, take the tail like this, it'll peg right in there. I do want to show off this gimmick while I have his head off, which sounds so wrong. We'll take the original minifigure and we'll insert him down in there. There's actually a little peg to hold that. We're going to remove, I'm going to remove the new figure off of here, um, off the head. So we'll come to the head 
the head, we gotta see, open the mouth, bring the head up, open the mouth like that. We got that going. You'll notice there's a little slot there to go over the figure's head. So you just kind of line that up like that and push those down. And now we have Ryu Seo looking pretty amazing. Um, of course, we can give him the staff, but before we do that, like I said, there was another accessory to come back to later. That is this. This is an alternate Ryu Seo hand. See, it still opens, but it has an extra little bonus. So we'll pop these off. They actually just, they remove now. These just come off now. You pull them straight off, pop this on. And now, when you give Ryu Seo his staff, if you don't rip his hand off in the process, give him the staff here, like that. Now, you can rotate it. They actually worked in a rotating wrist joint that's actually free wheel, like free spinning. So if you wanted to recreate him spinning his staff in front as a shield, or if you're doing the Heavenly Chi Palace, you can actually spin it up here too, which I think is probably the best intention. Um, whether or not they actually do a Super Sentai Artisan Dai Mugen, I, I doubt it, um, but it could happen. Uh, anyways, that wrist joint really opens up posability options. Um, it just really kind of allows him for more dynamic posing. So you can just kind of have the staff turned, maybe bend his leg like that. Uh, oh, if only his head turned. Surprise, it does. Uh, they worked in a neck joint in Ryuseo, um, which I think is great because that also translates to Dairano having a neck joint, um, which I just think is fantastic. But there you go. So now we got a very... Very much so, without ruining any structural integrity of anything. We've got, you know, the added wrist joint, which is totally optional if you don't like wrist joints. And the other thing spins pretty good, too. Um, I'm pretty impressed with that. And, uh, and of course, you got, you know, the head that turns now, which I think is just awesome. Um, so, overall, it's a 100% improvement. Um, it's nothing to take away from the original Ryusei-O. Um, because the original Ryusei-O is a great toy, and obviously, here it is. It's just, now it's been upgraded. And I think that's kind of the big takeaway from this is that it's just an upgrade of the original. Um, speaking of originals, I have a mostly uh, clean stickered Red Dragon Thunder Zord. I say almost because they have a couple factory applied uh, stickers and we'll bring him in. So you can kind of get a side by side comparison. This is be kind of the Dyrano would be very similar to that. Um, the original, yeah, the Ryuseo would be very similar to this. Um, See, look, you can have an actual elbow now because of the wrist, but original uh, Ryusei would look very similar to this, minus the weird Thunderbolt logos. So you can kind of see where all of the detail kind of gets added in with the paint and sculpting, and that's just super cool. Like, even down to here, they actually kept those, the paint of those gray. Actually, I think these are gray plastic caps instead. Um, and overall, it's just, it's just so much more of an improvement. It's like, here's 1993... Here's 2018. What can 25 years do? That's what 25 years can do. Anyways, let's move along to the other uh, Star Beasts. Here is Star Shishi. Uh, Star Shishi's jewel here. Um, oh, looks so good. It's a green. Um, pretty much everything I said about Ryusei is. It just looks really nice. I love how from here in certain angles you just get that, that color. You know, not like a picture or anything, but just the color. Which I think is really... These just look so... I'm so impressed with these. Especially since, again, they weren't um, part of the original cost. They didn't increase the price when they added them. They are just like, thank you for making this happen. Thank you for an overwhelming response. Here's a little bonus item. So pretty cool um, overall. Taking a look at the minifigures next. Uh, here is the Shishi Ranger, and here is the uh, original. So you can see the original is very stocky. I do like the old original style, but I like the new style a lot more. It's very much realistic. Um, of course, sit on Star Shishi's head right there, uh, which works really good. And we'll take a look. Uh, again, we're just kind of going over sculpt the detail at this point. Um, a lot of stuff in the face is sculpted. None of it was really stickers originally on Dyrano except for this part down here, but it still looks really nice. Uh, molded details all over the place. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of take a look at everything. The chrome's really well done. It's just, it shines, it's nice, it looks good. Uh, the helmet is kind of a big deal. Uh, they actually changed the connection port here. So, I'm going to bring in the original uh, American release of the helmet. 
So in the original one, uh, you kind of had this weird system where there was a set of two clips and then there was a clips on the side. So you'd have it clipped here for the Dyrano head, like that. Or you'd have it flipped around and clipped there. Um, it's not a great system because the clips are really small and easy, like really prone to breaking. Um, but that would be kind of how the system worked. Uh, they worked it differently this time, um, partially because of the new head joint. But basically there's this little clip. It folds away like this. Um, but you just bring this clip out. You clip it onto the top here. And then the helmet just kind of hangs down into place. Works really well. Works really effective. Um, I definitely like it. Star Shishi. All right, here is Star Tenma. Here is the jewel. Um, really nice logo. I always like that. Not sure how they get this thing to be. Like, they call this thing a Pegasus in America, but it's supposed to be kind of like a horse, not a whole Pegasus, but, you know. Um, I just, yeah, really nice colored uh, look. Um, minifigures, new one, original. Gonna take the original aside. The new one on to Star Tenma. So we got that there. Again, sculpted detail. Uh, this is like one of the nicest sculpted pieces. You don't even see it in Dyrano mode or, um, you know, Wan Tiger's combination or anything like that. You only see it in the individual modes and the carrier formation. So I guess if you're doing the Heavenly Chi Palace, you can see it. But love the techie detail here. Um, just some nice, it's all molded. That's like, it's just like you can feel this. I've, I've spent like, most of the morning I've had this, I've just been spent doing this. Because <laughs> it's just, it, it's nice, it's really cool. Um, I love the stripe that goes all the way around. It's like, you won't even see this part most of the time. They just did it anyways. Like, that's that's the attention to detail here that I, I really appreciate. Um, does it roll? Yes, it does. Really well, actually. It spins. Yeah, so it's still got its playability. Here we have Star Keelin. Now, here's the jewel. Um, really, really well made still. I always like the look of, uh, of the Keelin. Not in the mecha, but like this picture. I thought it was just like, it, it, they have a cool art style for the, the actual jewel images, but uh, we'll put it back in the tray. Uh, looking at the mini figures again, same kind of deal. I mean, I think the uh, rearranger one was the coolest because it had that dynamic pose. But in the show, you know, these guys just kind of stood there. So that's cool. Original one we'll put aside. And we'll use the new one on the Keeling. Um, this one's a little easier to get into the head than Tenma. But he ends up leaning forward a lot. But might be doing it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you just got to tip the head back a little bit more. <laughs> then it'll be straight. Um, can't see that at all. A little tall. So, looking at this here, um, again, same deal with uh, Tenma, sculpted and painted detail. All of this being sculpted is so cool, especially the inner part, because once you close this down for the combo, you can't even see it. You just launch poor Keeling Rancher. Um, I will pick him up in a minute. Uh, but yeah, really nice sculpted stuff on the side too, which is great. This whole detail, man. That's just, it's a heck of a paint job on this thing. But uh, yeah, we'll put him back on there. So we can get a nice little shot without him lying on the ground hopeless. And there we go, Keeling Ranger and Star Keeling. Here we have Star Ho-Oh. Now Star Ho-Oh is um, one of the most interesting things because the, the um, actual Ranger color and the jewel color is different than the actual uh, mecha, but here is the Ho-Oh jewel. You can see the nice uh, phoenix bird. It's kind of like a peacock look to it. I, I really dig it. It's really awesome. Again, nice color. Really looks good. Um, of a side note, I do appreciate this from Bandai. They gave you they give you this holster for the... Uh, oh, look at that. Look at the light catch all those at once. Uh, but yeah, that's a nice little holder. It's just in the box as a separate cardboard tray. Um, and I'm definitely going to be keeping them in this. Uh, maybe put some plastic on top. Uh, but yeah, look at that. You can just kind of like line these up uh, with the symbols up top. And look at that in the light. That just glows. 
has a nice little sunlight back here and that's just wow that's just cool back to the ho-oh uh, taking a look at the minifigures i think this is the most drastic change of the standing ones uh the original again very stocky very bulky very much the same as the other three or the other four of the originals uh, but now we got this nice little smaller uh thinner female body of Ho-Oh Ranger, which is a really appropriate. <laughs> so we'll take the Ho-Oh Ranger and put her on Star Ho-Oh, like that. Which looks really nice. I think it's kind of funny. It's like the other ones match color. This one's just crazy. It's like a wild pink woman is just randomly standing on this red bird. Um, but red bird looks good. Good bird. No, it does not come with the feet. The feet are not something that came with the original Dyrano, and they should not come with it here mostly because they're completely unnecessary. The feet never actually appear in the series. They're only there to hook up to Wan Tiger for the combination. And that's my piece on the feet. Uh, nice gold, shiny gold, shiny chrome gold tail. Um, black along the edges just gives us a really sleek look, uh, which I really like. And the fact that these aren't uh, plastic sprue is really nice too. Um, but those molded details, some painted details. On the bottom, there's nothing, because there's nothing to really, the. there's nothing to add here. You, like, there's nothing to add, because even in the show, it was just a giant red slate on the bottom. Um, this is where all the detail for this one comes in, so. Really cool, really neat. Everyone that's ever owned a Dyrano or a Thunder Megazord knows what this is. This is, of course, the carrier. This is the thing that rolls around and holds all of the Star Beasts. So let's load them up. We'll put Keeling here, like that. Tenma here, like that. Shishi in the middle. And then of course, Ho-Oh clips to the back. Which looks really nice, especially that gray piece there. That kind of gives it a good look. So there you go, there's the uh, carrier formation of the, 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 the Star Beast, um, which looks really good. Um, that's just kind of like the standard carrier formation. If you want to make it even better, we'll bring in Ryusei O to stand right there. And that looks pretty cool, right? And now you can do the spinny thing. You can just spin it, and now it's, it's more realistic and stuff. But yeah, there you go. There's a... Uh, there's the carrier formation, which looks pretty dang good. If it's a little big, that's how it is. Um, you can still roll it around, uh, which I do appreciate. And it does have the playability of the original. But there we go. That's pretty much all there is to the Star Beasts on their own. Now, of course, uh, you can combine these guys. What would a Sentai Mecha be without some combination? Um, before we get there, I think what we want to do is take a look at the sword. So we'll look at this now, because we're going to add it into the combination. But here's the sword. Now, the sheath here, fully sculpted, of course, I said this multiple times. Gold chrome tip here, the uh, gold chrome there, looks really nice, the belt clip. This actually pegs in now, so it doesn't just slide out, you actually do have a little locking uh, latch. And it is silver chrome with the green jewels and a sculpted and painted handle. Looks so good. Um, especially since for me, I only have the American release of this. So I have been stuck with for years just having this floppy mess. So there's there's like substantial improvement right there. Um, solid plastic, floppy mess. Now, there's another side to this whole story that I thought was really interesting. Um, if you look at the sword here, just insert it back in, click. We got this, looks really nice, nicely curved, so it's just a really easy to just pull and go. Um, now, the original had one major problem. It pointed the wrong way. Uh, for whatever reason, and I know this is an is issue with Dyrano as well, Instead of curving up like this is supposed to, it was curving down. And it may just be a design thing, but it was really strange. And it's just like it doesn't, the sword doesn't work that way. You gotta have it come 
you know, this is the correct direction. So really awesome to see that they corrected that in the uh, process of remolding everything. I think that's one of the coolest details. But yes, it's about time. Let's combine Dyrano. Starting off with Tenma and Keeling, they transform the same. I'm just gonna pull this up, bring this down like this, fold it up like that. This comes out, head folds in, foot folds up, and that already looks really great. Next, we'll transform uh, Shishi. You wanna pull the helmet off the back, flip the little latch inside, put that there, split the top part, this folds up, these fold out. You split, come in here, you fold these out like this, which looks really good, and we'll take Ho-Oh, uh, remove the tail, which you know, isn't too bad. I can also see it was molded in white plastic and then chromed over, uh, and then just kind of prep this like this, just kind of fold these. This will become more useful in a, in a bit. Ryusei is a little bit more complicated. Uh, we'll get the arms position like this. Make sure you have the non-rotating wrist here, otherwise it won't fit. Put that like that, and he's ready to go. So we're gonna take Ho-Oh and clip the gray clips onto the black uh, receivers. So let's move these arms out a little bit more. So we'll clip those there, like that. And then these slots will slot into the dragon uh, scale parts, like that. Which is pretty good. Then we'll bring in the legs here. And this will just slide in one click, and the other click. Okay. So from here, we'll clip the sword to the side here, the side skirt, like that. And then we will take each arm cover, and slide over Ryuseo's arm, and clip onto the elbow area, like that. Next, we will take the chest plate. This will go straight on here. And now you're probably wondering, why is his head so low? Well, the head's so low because that's how the original one worked, but this one has a new system, and we're just gonna pull this straight up. So you can see his head actually sticks up, up above the uh, chest plate, which actually gives it a better look overall. The helmet, there's a peg in the top of the head that fits into the, the hole for the minifigure, actually. Which will go in right there. And then last but not least, you wanna take the staff and the, uh, ho o tail like that to combine that and we're going to go straight into here because you can actually add the original minifigures inside just like that did that off camera on purpose and so we can close this up here you can kind of see them through the window and bam dyrano here is artisan dyrano in its complete form um, this is the main way I think most people display this mecha, and it certainly looks fantastic. Um, outside of, there's not really much new sculpting detail. Um, a lot of it's just paint on the arms, everything else we kind of looked at already. Um, the helmet just looks really nice with the painted eyes as opposed to the sticker. Um, looks really good. The sheath works really well. Uh, the staff, let's talk about the staff. The staff looks really nice, really cool with the gold chrome. Um, and it actually, you have to split it to put it in the hand now. What do I mean? Well, they re-sculpted the hands. This is one of my least favorite parts of the original, um, which I'll bring in my, again, my Thunder Megazord piece for comparison. Um, that would be, here's one of the arms. The hands were like this. Now, this meant a lot of things, but for one, I mean, it held the staff okay, but kind of loosely still, but the sword... I'll get the original sword just for posterity's sake here. But uh, the original sword just kind of flopped around. They like could clip it in like that, but it still gets super loose. And there was just no reason to have this giant circle. Now, what they did here is they kind of gave it a more natural hand sculpt, which I'll zoom in right here so we can see. It's kind of a more natural uh, look to it, where it's kind of more of an oblong shape. 
Now this means in order to use the staff, you have to actually, I'm gonna use the staff in the other hand, actually. You have to split it, which it does there. Uh, it does have a specific direction to actually plug back in. So it's good to keep in track of that. But there you go, the staff holds in fairly well. Um, and then now when we pull the sword out, like here, once we get that all, get the dust off of that. So once we have the sword here, that slips into the hand, and because of the handle like that, it holds really tight. So you've got a really nice looking diver now. Um, it actually holds the weapons really secure, which I really like, because like now you pick this guy up, nothing falls off. Um, nothing's rattling around. It's just solid. There's, this is the official shake test of Dyrano there. Um, you get a little flop here because of the nature of the design. Now, of course, like I said, Ryuseo has a, a head neck joint now, which applies to Dyrano. Since the helmet is no longer clipped into the shoulders, uh, you can actually just rotate this freely, um, which works really well. Uh, the helmet does tend to kind of pop off. Um, you kind of get that thing square on there and it won't move on you. Um, but overall, it looks really good. Now, if you're probably wondering, um, you know, what if you want to recreate the final attack uh, from the series? Well, he doesn't have the articulation range uh, to properly hold the sword with two hands or anything, but they give you a couple special accessories. First of all, let's take the helmet off. Um, the original uh, had the removable face piece for some reason. There was no real reason for that. Here, they decided to take that and give you an alternate face plate. This one actually has um, painted in eyes for the power-up look for the final attack. And then to the sidebar there, you want to know that I think that this was one of the smartest changes because that was something that they could have kept that to keep the helmet one giant sculpted piece um, since the helmet's been kind of slightly redesigned anyways. Um, but instead, they added the eyes, which I thought was cool, which gives you kind of options there. And then as well, they give you another sword. And this other sword is a powered up sword. Uh, it's a clear plastic blade, clear yellow. Um, it's meant to just be the sword charged up. It can also fit in the holster if you want. It's the same exact design as the regular. It's just got a different color blade. Um, this is super cool. Uh, Wand Tiger is scheduled to come with a backdrop for uh, Wand Tiger as well as for Dyrano for the final attack. So you can get that cool, like, nice mountain uh, look behind it. But uh, other than that, I think this is really fantastic. It's, it's a neat little bonus. Um, it's something that puts, it sets it aside from the original uh, greatly uh, for the final combination, and I, I really do like it. Um, I think it's a, it's a cool bonus. I think it's not something I, I really bought this for, but th now that I have it, I might leave him displayed like this, because he's like, oh, he's in the final attack, and I can just have him, or I just even have him going crazy with the sword, like, up, because um, there's a lot of options there. Uh, would a wrist swivel here have been nice? Yeah, but it would have uh, caused some structural integrity problems. So I'm not really complaining too much. Um, I overall really like the look of Artisan Dyer now. So in conclusion, Super Sentai Artisan Deluxe Dyer is amazing. It's incredible. The amount of detail and the paintwork and the overall just pro final product is just awesome. And I can definitely recommend it for those of you that are willing to pay the cost and are big enough Die Ranger fans or fans of Dyer to get this. Um, it's definitely worth it, in my opinion. For other people, it may not be as worth it. It was a lot of money, um, and it still will probably be a lot of money on the aftermarket. Um, but in the end, I I really love it, and I'm. it's been several months of waiting, waiting to see if it would go through, and then waiting for it to come out. Um, the Super Sentai uh, toy blog on the Bandai website, kept providing updates and showing more pictures, and they're like, oh yeah, so we're gonna actually include a second set of minifigures that are sculpted to be, um, to be the, you know, proper poses for, for riding the, the mecha, and, and, and little details like that, like, made this a, a really nice journey over the last several months, and I, I love seeing it develop, um, and now having it in hand, I, I don't feel disappointed at all, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, every detail down to the box is just so well done. Um, overall, I definitely say that I sort of want Wan Tiger, but at the same time, I don't think, I think because I don't like Wan Tiger's design as much as I do Dyrano, 
I may not get that same gratifying feeling. I think that's what comes down to it. If this is like one of your favorite mecha of all time, this is probably worth it to you. Um, if you haven't ordered one already. Uh, I definitely, definitely love this. And I hope that the Super Sentai Artisan reprint line continues because I would love to see some older mecha get re-released. Like it, it's the 30th anniversary of Live Man. Perhaps we could get a live Robo and a live Boxer in this line. Um, kind of the original deluxe ones reprinted and upgraded. That would be really amazing. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm looking forward. I'm glad that there's more Sentai products out there now. Uh, Super Mini Plaza doing a lot of great stuff too. Um, and I hope that Super Sentai Artisan will get to do things. Um, just space out the releases. Like, don't throw, like, three main mecha at us in, you know, a year. Because I think that would be a little too much. But um, I definitely want to see some more. I, I definitely want to see, like, one more this year. I think with Wand Tiger coming out in August, I want to see one more go up for order this year, I think. Um, that would be really cool. But, uh, yeah. Um, for those curious, it does, these are completely compatible with the original versions. Um, I tested that earlier with my American, uh, White Tiger Sword. Totally, uh, functional. Um, of course, this thing, all the components of this looked way better than the Tiger Sword. Um, the Tiger Sword's old and, you know, beat up, but, you know, it does work. So, like, if I wanted to combine this with the Tiger Sword to make combos, I can do that. Um, it'll, the, um... The base plate, I mean, this fits on top of my uh, tour, the shovel sword. Which, by the way, I forgot to show, and they put the Dire Ranger logo on there and said Bandai 2018, so I thought that was like a cool little throwback. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, it works with the original stuff. They they recreate the original mold that well um, that it does combine still, so that's, that's, a good, that's a good sign for the future, too, in case you don't want to buy all the mecha from a line, but you want kind of like an upgraded main mecha. That might be an option. Uh, but yeah, so it'll totally combine with uh, previous Dire Ranger mecha and, you know, uh, Power Rangers Season 2 mecha. So you have a lot of options there. And um, overall, I think I've pretty much run out of things to say on Dire Ranger. I know this is a long video, but there was a lot to cover. And um, thank you Bandai for making this because this is such a cool item. And it's something that I've talked about for years now, wanting to see older mecha get reissued because you know, aftermarket prices just make it kind of hard to buy some of the older stuff because of how much they go for, or parts missing, or stuff is broken, or, you know, people learned, uh, oh, the plastic quality didn't hold up over the years, and now things are just, you know, really uh, fragile, and so it's it's nice to get something like this, um, in, especially this year, um, definitely, definitely cool. So anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, tell me what you think of Super Sentai Artisan Dire Now uh, compared to the Legacy Thunder Megazord. Um, if you have one of those, comment below. Let me know what you think of this compared to that. Um, I don't own one, so I can't do a direct comparison. But, you know, um, I think I kind of picked this one over the Legacy Thunder Megazord just uh, off personal basis. Uh, let me know in the comments if my uh, Magnum Defender Morpher was too distracting as I was trying to sub it in for an Aura Changer until I realized that this thing just says Galaxy on it. Um, need to get a Super Sentai Artisan, Artisan uh, Aura Changer at some point. But uh, yeah, anyways, stay tuned for more Super Sentai reviews here on this channel, both current and past. I'm kind of mixing it up a little bit. Uh, check out Hero Club for all your Super Sentai news and more. And until next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.